Um, so I'll start off by apologizing for having quite a dry title. Um, I didn't have any imagination when I was putting the title together. Um, but it will be quite a colorful presentation, so hopefully that will make up for it. Um, this kind of paper comes about from wanting to try and take a lot of the kind of rich data that we have in archaeological assemblages and to be able to analyze that spatially in, in new ways that we haven't previously been able to do so. Um, and one of the forms of analysis which is used a lot in archaeology is correspondence analysis, which is um, a reductive technique where you take lots and lots of columns of data from um, assemblages or sites. So in the example on the, the right, we've got um, a series of different sites, and then for each site, um, the number of bones of different species kind of catalogued. And if we were to do a kind of some sort of conventional GIS tools and that, we could look at the number of cattle, we could look at the number of sheep or the number of pigs, but trying to look at all of it together um, is a bit tricky. Um, so correspondence analysis uh, is a form of reducing multifarate data down to um, just a, a couple of dimensions so that you can visualize it more easily, and it's a kind of exploratory technique. Um, and the basic idea behind it is that samples that have close proximity to each other are likely to have similar assemblages. So, uh, an example by um, Marika van der Veen and Alex Zafada looking at the introduction of an exotic species into Roman Britain. This one. On the left, you've got the um, sites, and the, I've circled the late Roman sites, and on the right, you've got it ties directly to which species have been introduced that are linking to sites. So the late Roman sites see the introduction of damsons, plums, cherries, um, and other fruit. And that's the sort of general idea behind it. At least sort of, there's an association between those late sites and those, those fruits. But when it comes to the kind of spatial analysis of this, this is what they published, which is kind of very rudimentary and isn't really any kind of actual spatial analysis. It's just a distribution map. Um, another example from a couple of years ago is work by um, Katie Manning et al. Um, at UCL looking at the um, origins and spread of uh, domestic agriculture from the Near East across Europe during the Neolithic period. And here in the correspondence analysis on the left, they've got this clear kind of spatial structure in there because you can see that the sites that come from central and southwest Mediterranean are kind of going to one side of the plot, whereas the sites from central and northern and northwest Europe are going up to the top right um, and linking up this kind of case. So there's people obviously were using different species in different places. But the kind of analysis that, when they tried to translate that into analysis, they ended up with kind of pie charts. Um, actually, the ones they published all seem to be in black and white. I did find on their website one in color but it's still just a kind of a mass of pie charts and you're kind of losing, having done that analysis, you're then sort of checking it out and just putting up some pie charts in, in place of the kind of the analysis. So there's some problems in, in the, these correspondence analyses so far is that there's um, limited ability in the analysis to be able to look at the relationship between spatial neighbors to see if they have similar assemblages. There's limited ability to use the actual data to define regions yourself. Instead, people are using kind of things, looking at northern Europe or southern Mediterranean or whatever, and forcing regions onto the data rather than drawing date regions out of them. And you know, we have no way of officializing the results of the correspondence analysis spatially. So what I want to talk about for the rest of this talk is a kind of methodology which I've been playing around with of trying to get that correspondence analysis into a GIS. Um, and this is data which has been lent to me by Richard Thomas, and I'm very grateful for letting me play with it. And it's um, from 249 assemblages from about 150 sites. Some sites just have one assemblage, and some sites have kind of up to four assemblages that come from the kind of middle bit of England. So. East Anglia, East Midlands, West Midlands, and some of the home counties. Um, and I've sort of split the data up into four main periods, the Late Iron Age, Early Roman, Middle Roman, and Late Roman. Um, 
and just something to kind of look out for. Um, I was told by the zoo archaeologist that in the later periods there should be more cattle rearing in Roman Britain. This is something that they were expecting to find, and also kind of association between pigs and urban centres. Okay, so that was my initial correspondence analysis that I did. Don't need to worry too much about the colours, it doesn't show that each um, each point represents an assemblage and they're coloured by period. And the periods all kind of sit on top of each other more or less. So there isn't a kind of strong clustering by period to one area. In the I've only I've restricted it to, for simplicity down to three species, so just the cattle, sheep, goat, and pig. Cattle have gone to the left of the plot, sheep goat have gone to the bottom right, and pig have gone up to the top. Now, the way that I'm going to get this into GIS is I'm going to colour each of those points, and I'm going to colour them using the um, a red, green, blue kind of circular plot. So, each of those points I can put into well, this is going to be into the HSV or IHB or whichever kind of version of it, of letters you prefer, um, colouring system, so that each point, depending on its um, direction away from the centre, that will give you a, a hue, and then in terms of the distance away from the centre, that will give you its kind of lightness or its intensity. Um, and that means then, when I plot it, that things which are plotted as red, those are going to be kind of cows or have more cattle in those assemblages. Things that plot blue are going to have more sheep in those assemblages, and things which plot green are going to have more pigs in the assemblages. And if it comes out black, then it's kind of a in the middle sort of mixture type thing. Um, it's just a little bit on how to, to do that in a bit more detail. So, what you're basically doing is taking the um, what are effectively Cartesian coordinates from the correspondence analysis plot and turning them into polar coordinates of uh, an angle and a distance. Okay, and that's what happens when I plot that initially. These are, those are my 249 um, assemblages and the kind of colours that they come out with. That comes out as a, a bit of a mess to start off with. So you can see some kind of patterns, perhaps there's quite a bit of blue in the middle. Down towards the bottom, there's some red, which shows that there's more cattle towards the bottom, more sheep in the middle. Um, but it's difficult to kind of sort out a bit. So I've um, split it up by period. So we look at the late Iron Age. And if I put some kind of symbols on to kind of help. This is roughly what I was initially seeing when I looked at this. You have cattle in the south, lots of sheep, sheep goat in the late Iron Age. If you move forward into the early Roman period, cattle, things don't change too much. There's a bit of a change and some pig seemingly turning up in Leicester um, and spreading around. Into the middle Roman period though, we start seeing a lot more kind of cattle turning up in the assemblages. Um, and more pig in assemblage, and the sheep, sheep goat are kind of being pushed down into the kind of centre. And that kind of pattern continues into the late Roman period, where we have lots and lots of cattle in the assemblages and not so much sheep. So that's kind of fulfilling what the Zoarchs kind of, kind of told me to look out for. However, I wasn't really very happy with that. I mean, it was quite difficult to read plots. People didn't really follow what I was kind of getting at. So I thought it wouldn't be great if I could kind of interpolate those colours and get a kind of real colour map of, of what's going on. Um, and this ended up, after trying various different things, so I went with the inverse distance weighting of the axis plots. So each of those points has two different axis values from the correspondence analysis plot. Interpolate each of those axes individually and then put them together to effectively combine, to convert them from Cartesian um, coordinates of raster coordinates, sorry, that's not making any sense, rasters of Cartesian coordinates to change them into polar rast, po a raster of polar coordinates. Did I get that right? Um, and that gives you, then you've got kind of 
it makes three layers. You have a, a direction, a distance, and then I've put just a one in for saturation, just to kind of get as much color there to, to boost it. And then you can run it through the kind of composite bands to, to get your kind of image. And that's what we get out. For some reason, when I was running this last in during the week, late Iron Age stopped working for me, so I don't have the late Iron Age part. But this is the early Roman period, so going back to what I was saying, the blue is kind of think of the blue as the sheep goat, the red as the cattle, the green as pigs. Moving into if I take away the points, then that gives you kind of a nice sort of visualization of, of how these different assemblages map onto different areas and gives you a, a starting point to think about where to start defining your own regions from the data. Moving into the middle Roman period, then you can start seeing the kind of the move, the march north of the cattle, um, and then into late Roman, the cattle really are starting to become much more kind of dominant in, in the assemblages. Um, and within those, there's little kind of green bits that kind of flare up at places like St. Albans and at Colchester, which may does seem to kind of link back to this kind of pigs at urban centers. But it's not kind of a consistent thing. There's, there's, it's, there's much more variability in the data set than kind of had been previously talked about by the, the Zoarchs. Um, and I just want to kind of test a little bit to see whether what I was seeing actually kind of whether the, the analysis actually reflects kind of reality. So I've just picked out kind of three areas. One is um, a big East Anglia area, which you might have started with if you're just going to stick an area on and say, well, I think the East Anglia region is probably one which is doing something different. And then I've picked out two areas myself from the analysis. The top is sort of a North Cambridge area, and the bottom is the South, um, South Essex area. And the, just running back through from the early Roman to the middle Roman, to the late Roman, the, the top area, the North Cambridgeshire area, seems to be an area which doesn't have a lot of change, and the, whereas the South Essex area is an area which has kind of a significant change in the middle and late Roman period. Okay, and just some kind of quick charts to kind of show that. So from the East Anglia, just looking at all of the East Anglia assemblages, looking at kind of the average proportions of those, yeah, there's a bit of change going on, but that kind of doesn't really describe all the variability which is actually in that data set. Whereas splitting, picking out those kind of regions from the data, the North Cambridgeshire, there's a little bit of change in the middle and late Roman period, but effectively it's the same assemblages that are turning up from the late Iron Age all the way through to the late Roman period. Whereas in South, South, that kind of South Essex little area, the, there's a change between the early Roman and the middle Roman in terms of kind of how these assemblages work. So that's kind of where I've got to with the, the method. Um, there are kind of some, some problems with it. Um, I'm not really that happy about ultimately projecting in with red, green, blue because it's not, it doesn't really map very well to the colors that we actually see and what we're the way this is kind of working on is the similar colors should have similar assemblages. Colors that are far apart should have different assemblages. So you want a kind of color distribution that is e evenly distributes the color, and RGB doesn't really do that. I'd like to um, use um, CI CIE Lab, which I think would give a better spread of colors, but I haven't worked out how to do that yet. Um, there's also a bit of an issue in the software which I've been using to convert from sort of the HSV to the RGB in terms of the raster conversion tends to distort some of the colors. And when color is so key, if you get a bit of distortion, then it starts changing the whole pattern you see. And the other kind of bit I've put in about the interpolation is I've just sort of been making it up, really. So I've tried other forms of interpolation, but I'm, this is one which is fairly Computationally, it's quite quite simple to run, um, and it seems to do as well as the others. But I'm happy to have other suggestions. Um, I've had trend analysis suggested to me a few times, but it just doesn't really work in picking up all the variability in, in the data. Um, and just to finally, to a quick note, just to show you, it, this isn't about animal bones. It's it's much kind of you know, use it on whatever types of images you want to. So this is one which I did looking at 
um, ceramic assemblages from a Roman fort. This is data from ADS, but made available to me by Pim Allison. Um, and hey, don't worry too much about the colours, as in the central building there comes up with quite a different ceramic assemblage to what's the building in the, on the left, which is meant to be a hospital. Um, and you don't have to kind of interpolate, you could also, this is a, another Roman fort where I've um, picked out buildings and I've coloured those buildings and you can see that the, the two barrack blocks at the top, they've got kind of a similar colour, similar assemblage, and the area in the middle with all the greens and the blues, they sort of have similar assemblages as well. Um, I won't offer any interpretation as to why though on that point. Um, but I'll leave it there. Thank you for your attention.